and dive into the teams today. Like I said, AFC West, NFC West. We will start off in the AFC West, and we will start with the Super Bowl runner-up, and that would be the Kansas City Chiefs. They went 14-2 and last year, won the division. They uh, Their team needs, again, these are aggregated from a bunch of different websites, just looking through what everybody thinks they needed. Uh, they needed center, linebacker, wide receiver, tight, uh, sorry, not tight end, tackle, excuse me. Um, yeah. You know, okay, I, I kind of like what they did in the draft here. There, wasn't, there were not a ton of needs other than their offensive line, but they kind of sort of started to fix that even before the draft started with the trade for Orlando Brown Jr. Uh, traded away their first round pick and I believe their third round pick to go and get him. And, you know, second round, they get linebacker Nick Bolton out of Missouri, center Creed Humphrey out of Oklahoma, edge Joshua Kando out of Florida State, tight end Noah Gray out of Duke, wide receiver Cornell Powell out of Clemson, and guard Trey Smith out of Tennessee. All of these, to me, were value picks. They did yep. a pretty good job. Creed Humphrey, I think, can start day one. He can play center or guard. Uh, Nick Bolton mm-hmm. is a stand-up. He's not the most athletic guy, but he is somebody that can absolutely make plays, and he can track guys down. I mean, if you watch some of his highlight film, he can he can get after fast, fast wide receivers. I mean, he tracked down Kadarius Toney multiple times in their game. Um, Joshua Kando from Florida State, like, didn't produce a lot last year, but you can tell he's uh, he's freakish athletic. I, I like that. I Trey Smith falling as far as he did, that's all based on medical. So long as he is healthy, he right. will be able to play. I, I like everything about this. Me too. I, lo- I like what the Chiefs did. Look, we knew the Chiefs' weaknesses, and I don't give a damn what any website says. This is what the Chiefs' weaknesses were. They needed to protect Patrick Mahomes. We saw the problem in the Super Bowl, and they were susceptible against the run, especially in the red zone, one of the worst red zone run-stopping defenses in the league. So they go out. They trade their first round pick. They get Orlando Brown. I could, I didn't see an offensive lineman in the first round that I would rather have over Orlando Brown right now. So I thought it was a great move. And then Nick Bolton adding to that. He's a good young linebacker. Everything I've read about this kid tells me he should be a really, really solid contributor right away for this defense stopping the run. So they said, okay, we got our asses kicked in the Super Bowl. We kind of, we got embarrassed. We're going to address those needs, and we're going to do it right now. And their offensive line didn't just get better. It got substantially better with the addition of Brown. You're 100% right. Creed Humphrey is probably going to be their starting center. A guy who didn't allow a sack in two full years at a Power 5 school? Come on, man. I love those type of picks, especially in the second round. Love what the Chiefs did with this draft. Yeah, I liked it. I thought they did pretty good. I, I didn't really take into effect the trade, which is which is what they got their first round pick for. But but I guess I should have because that's that's absolutely the way you got to do this. As long as they're not giving up multiple picks, but if they just sure. give up a first for a player, then that's their first round pick. And and yeah, Orlando Browns he fills that hole. That offensive line is much better than they were last year, probably. And uh, they're definitely going to be better than they were in the Super Bowl. Um, and, and this team got substantially better. But this is what we're finding when you look at all these teams is, is the teams that don't have glaring needs or are already talented across the board seem to be able to draft much better than everybody else. Even though this team actually does have holes and knees, they were able to fill those needs pretty well. Well, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing about that is you don't have to overthink yourself, right? Like, you yeah. you see a pick, you know its value. Even if it is for a need, you know, all right, well, it, even if we have to reach a little bit, we can do that. Or if it's a value pick, yeah, we can we can do that too. Like, there's so many yeah. different things you can do when you are a well-run franchise, and that's exactly what the Chiefs are right now. Yeah, so. 100% agree. And and look, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, we th- there's, there's two ways of thinking about it, right? Take the best player on the board and just sort it out later. But when you are a team who really doesn't have any of these huge glaring weaknesses and you just go and fill those little needs that you have, the Chiefs are going to be the favorite to win the Super Bowl again. They've got the best player on the planet in Patrick Mahomes. That offense is going to be unstoppable again as long as everyone stays healthy. They address their needs, address some of that run-stopping need, which they really need to do on the defensive side of the ball, especially in the playoffs. They need to be able to get off the field and get Mahomes back on the field. And I think they addressed all those needs beautifully. And Britt Reed won't be there, so there's another distraction. You don't have to worry about some psychopath who can't make any good decisions. Andy Reed just has to keep his bad kids away from the team, all right? Just keep these bad (laughs) kids. I know it seems a little heartless, whatever, but when your son's an asshole, keep him away from your job. That's what I do. Not a bad idea. (laughs) He's not always an asshole, but sometimes. (laughs) It's not a bad idea. Chris, you got any, uh, any final comments on it? 
No, man. Uh, I think that's it. Let's uh, let's dive on to the Las Vegas Raiders, and this is a team that Chris has wanted to cheer for, especially when Black Jack Del Rio was there when they announced they were moving, and of course they bring in uh, Chucky himself, and and Chris can't really get down with that. So yeah. it, the the drafts for the Raiders have been a little strange, uh, according to all these different sites. The aggregated needs for them is tackle, safety, cornerback, linebacker, wide receiver. They went 8-8 eight and eight last year. What they ended up doing is first round, they take tackle Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama. Uh, second round, safety Trevon Morig out of TCU. Edge rusher in the third round, Malcolm Kuntz out of Buffalo. Uh, Divine Diablo out of Virginia Tech, a safety. Another safety in the fourth round, Tyree Gibson, sorry, Tyree Gillespie out of Missouri. Quarterback Nate Hobbs out of Illinois. Center Jimmy Morrissey out of Pittsburgh in the seventh round, taking a flyer on him. I, I'm... I don't hate it. I think if yeah. you had switched around the first round pick and the second round pick, which everybody has said thus far, exactly. I think it would be just fine. If you had taken Morrig at 17 and uh, Leatherwood at 43, that's about where both of them are. The issue is you you put a whole lot into a player that everybody thought. I mean, the over-under as far as Vegas draft odds was 46.5 for Alex Leatherwood. And nobody saw him going top 20. And, yeah. and yet they, they saw him. They knew that they wanted him. They didn't want to risk it, and I, I get it because that was one of their biggest needs. I, they did need to shore up the offensive line, but there were a ton of other needs as well. They took three safeties in this draft. I don't, I don't hate what they're doing, but I think that there were more efficient ways of going about it. Uh, Kyle, what, what do you think here? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I just jumped in second. I mean, it's Chris's show for Christ's sake, and no, no, I'll no, just no. jump in here yeah, and just you know away, bull rush away. Come on, bull rush away, but. No, no, uh, no. I completely agree. Now, look, I do think they address some needs, and you're 100% right. If they would have taken Morrig in the first round and Leatherwood in the second round, we'd all be saying, hey, good job by the – surprisingly good job by the Raiders because they're always morons in the draft. I mean, this goes back since I can remember. Like, like the, Darius Hayward Bay really stands out. I remember them taking him over Michael Crabtree. I'm like, what the hell? And It's an Al Davis thing to do. But they did address some needs. I would say out of this division, I think this was the worst draft of all the teams in the division. It might be the worst draft of the two divisions we're going to talk about today. I know the Seattle so, and Arizona ones so are a little me. bit. I'm so for, <laughs> uh, of my 49ers, I know. And we'll talk about my 49ers because I'm a little bit perturbed at them. But they did do some things there. It's strange. The Raiders are always going to be strange. But there's no doubt about it. They need it. Here's the thing I don't like. You're just going to blow up your offensive line. We just talked about this with uh, the secondary of uh, who the hell were we talking about yesterday? And they did the same exact damn thing, the Titans. They get rid of all their corners, yeah. and they want to try to draft these young guys to replace it. And that's what the Raiders did. So you get rid of Hudson, you get rid of Trent Brown, who I know wasn't healthy and had COVID stuff, but still Trent Brown and Alex Leatherwood. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the amount of space between those two yes. is quite significant. Uh, I say it's pretty average, probably the worst draft in the division. I do like the second round pick. I think Morgan's a great pick for them and they desperately need secondary help. But if you're going to draft a guy who wasn't going to be drafted till mid second round in the first round, why not just trade the hell out of it and get some assets, get a wide receiver. You need a wide receiver. I mean, you already have an abysmal quarterback in Derek Carr. It's just an absolute can at quarterback. He's one of my least favorite quarterbacks is he ever that in the bad? history of the league. I'm not trying to defend him. I just, it, we, we all, and I, I'm guilty of it as well. Is Derek Carr really that bad? Yes, he is that bad. He's terrible. You're never going to win anything with Derek Carr, and he's never going to make the big play that puts you over the top. He's never going to have that game against a good team that you need to win. He won't win it. I mean, you st saw it last year. They started out good, like, oh, the Raiders might be this seventh uh, playoff team here. No, they fell apart because when it matters yeah. most, Derek Carr falls apart. He always has. He always will. I'm not a big Raiders guy, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> so I, I do think that they just – they missed the they missed the mark on your first round pick, and when you do that, it's hard to give you a good grade. So I say they have the worst draft in the division. Wasn't overall terrible. I do like a couple of those safeties. I even like the kid in the third round out of Virginia Tech. Those guys are going to play a ton of snaps for the Raiders because their secondary is so bad. So they did address some needs. Just don't necessarily love how they went about doing it. Yeah, I don't really understand why they took so many safeties. Like, yeah. they had a need, but this is not one of those things where, okay, we need a tackle. Well, let's take four left tackles. Well, hang on. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't I don't understand it. <laughs> or or if, you, if you had a need at quarterback, you wouldn't take four quarterbacks. You don't play yeah. two safeties on the field at the same time. 
right? No, yeah. there's not a single defense that's designed that way. I don't know that well, any of these guys are strong enough or fast enough to play cornerback. I mean, you, you do play two safeties. You, you just don't play three safeties at a time. Like, I, I, I don't it, think it's... It sort of reminds me, remember when Washington needed a quarterback uh, in the late 90s, to, they, when they or mid-90s, they drafted Heath Schuler and Gus Farratt, and then, yep. of course, to my dismay, especially for my baseball card collection, because I went all in on Heath Schuler, and that was the wrong decision. <laughs> Gus Farratt ended up being the uh, better player but it is kind of weird we're like we need a quarterback we'll take two it is a little bit weird to take three safeties in the first four I mean, rounds the, the, the Washington I did this understand you know it. I don't think their offensive line's better if you trade Leatherwood for Brown um it, it, it Trent Brown did did exactly what players do all the time they they perform overperform what they really are capable of in New England they go and they get a, just a shitload of money poured all over them and then they come back down to earth and then when they get released by their other team or disappointed by their other team they just crawl back to New England and take a you know a cheese sandwich and he's going to go back to being a pro bowler again um it, i Part of this is just a lack of trust in John Gruden to draft well. His his last two drafts he's had since he's been there have not been well at all. They, yeah. they, uh, he's he's drafted far more bust than good, and and I just don't. This is the thing where I didn't like what the Colts did the other day, right? But I trust their front office, so I just assume I'm wrong on a lot of these guys. Okay, I work under the assumption that half of these guys are going to be bust and not be in the league. And it's all the top tier guys. Okay, I don't want it to be. I I I, I like Moore a lot, and and I think he could be good. But I just work under the assumption that no, you've you've been touched by Gruden, which means you're probably not very good. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are probably right about that. Uh, y'all ready to move on to the Chargers? Yep. Yeah, let's move on. Let's <clears throat> do it. The Los Angeles Chargers seven and nine last year uh, looked okay with the new quarterback. Not bad, Herbert. Uh, Performed beyond reasonable expectations, I believe. Uh, yeah. it, the the whole situation with um, I just went blank on the quarterback, uh, uh, Tyrod Taylor. That yeah. whole situation very strange. Obviously, <sighs> they they played in a soccer stadium with basically nobody. Uh, nobody was there in L.A. last year. It was just a weird year for the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know there is some promise on the horizon. New coaching staff, new everything. Their needs were tackle, guard, cornerback, tight end, and wide receiver. And I could totally agree with all of those. They they took a lot. They took a lot of players. And you know that I'm a big fan of that. Their first-round pick, Rashawn Slater, out of Northwestern, thought it was great. Had a tremendous yeah. tackle. Didn't play last year. He opted out at Northwestern. But Chris and I went and saw him in person against Chase Young, and he shut Chase Young down. It was yes, ridiculous. Sir. Uh, yeah. Round two, they got Asante Samuel Jr. out of Florida State, cornerback. I thought that was a really good pick, uh, value yeah. pick at that spot. Number 77, they got wide receiver Josh Palmer out of Tennessee. That one was kind of strange to me. Tight end Trey McKitty out of Georgia in the uh, late third round. Again, a strange one, but mm-hmm. I can see it. The talent's there. Uh, Chris Rumpf out of Duke. He was one of my favorite edge rushers uh, this season. And in, really over the past however many years, he's, he's a talented player, maybe the most talented player on Duke's team. Um, which is not hard, obviously. Fifth round, tackle Brendan Jameis uh, out of Nebraska. Linebacker Nick Neenman out of Iowa. Running back Larry Roundtree out of Missouri, which was a really good value pick. And then cornerback Mark mm-hmm. Webb out of Georgia late. Uh, I don't hate this at all. Like I, I think that they address some needs, and they got some pretty good value players that may not have produced at the highest level, but can absolutely <laughs> produce at the next level. And, and I, think, I think they did okay here. Yeah, I love what the Chargers did. I think they knocked it out of the park in the first two rounds. I like. I had Slater just a little bit higher than Panay Sewell. I think he's an absolute beast, and I love what they did there. And let's not forget, this team got better before the draft. They didn't have to do a damn thing other than get rid of Anthony Lynn, who's in that Freddie Kitchens class of head coach. I mean, we're talking about, look, a great leader of men. You could tell that people want to play for him, but the guy had absolutely no idea what he was doing on the sideline. So even though they brought in a young D coordinator, pretty unproven in my opinion, and uh, Staley, I mean, it's addition by subtraction, just losing Anthony Lynn. And I really love the Asante Samuel pick in the second round. I was shocked that he fell that far to them. He and Derwin James have a nice relationship too. The two Florida State kids, of course, they're going to have Derwin James back. 
sky's the limit for Los Angeles. The problem is the city doesn't, I've been to games in that soccer stadium. I went the year before COVID to a Packer game and there was more, way more Packer fans and Charger fans there. They were very aggressive at, by the way, very aggressive. We got really <laughs> drunk on the field. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but I, I think the Chargers knocked it out of the park here. I don't know a mu- b- much about Josh Palmer. I know McKitty's more of a blocking tight end, not necessarily receiving tight end. And they did lose Hunter Henry. But I think they like that young 6'8 kid, uh, Donald Parham, from the XFL, and that kid's a red zone beast. Herbert's going to be better this year. Slater's going to really protect that blind side. I thought the Chargers, Chargers did a great job, and I love that pass rush you touched on, uh, Chris Rumpf, in the fourth round. I thought that was a fantastic pick. So overall, for me, I think the Chargers probably had the best draft in this division. Denver was really, really close, and we'll get to momentarily, but I, I really like what the Chargers did. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think the Chargers, are they're up there with Denver. I think Denver was slightly better, but you're splitting yeah. hairs there. Um, Slater, I was 100% with you. I actually had Slater better than Sewell as well. Not by a lot, but but I, I just think he's – I like my offensive lineman to be big, mean, and nasty, okay? And mm-hmm. he's got a mean streak. He's got a nasty streak to him. He's not afraid to, to F somebody up. And it's right? versatile. Yeah. He's yeah. insanely versatile, and that helps out a lot. So, well, yeah, that yeah. helps too. But I, I mean, I think he's going to lock down the left side, and it, it, you know, his his versatility is not going to come into play. They're not moving him to guard, okay, and they're not moving him to the other side. Um, yeah, he, he's he's going to anchor that. What they need is health, okay. That that's what's killed the the, the mm-hmm. Chargers for so long. Is they need to fire every team doctor they've got, and they need yeah. to just rehire a whole new staff. Except um, for the guy that injected Tyrod Taylor so we could get Herbert on the no, field, right? No, you that pay was the that best thing that ever battle. happened to them. It is the best thing that ever happened to him. You pay that guy his severance, and then you let him walk because yeah. that team can't stay healthy. You brought up Derwin James to work with Asante Samuel. Listen, mm-hmm. Derwin is one of the greatest what-ifs in all of football You right got now. that right. Because yeah. I think he is an absolute monster when he plays, but the problem is, is that man doesn't play football for a living. He doesn't. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what you can call what he does, but it's not play football because he doesn't. He, he's just not available on Sundays. Um, yeah. I think the Asante Samuel pick was unbelievable. I thought this guy was a first round dude. They got him middle uh, to you know, I guess right down in the middle. It was the like second pick 40, round, forty seven, and, and and I just can't believe that he fell that far. They Me needed neither. cornerback help. I think he's gonna. They got two of the best players. They got the two best players on the board when they draft it. No exactly. doubt. No doubt. 100%. 100%. And, and so I really like what this organization is doing. And, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. I think they're going in the right direction. I'm with you. I'm not a fan of Anthony Lynn, but I got no clue who this damn guy is that they hired. And I'm not a fan. of. I, I don't know anything about the the, the the offensive coordinator, the coaching staff that they brought in. Nothing. These are, these are very unknown guys in the NFL. Yeah. Yes, yeah. no, you're you're 100 percent right. Brandon about Staley. That. I mean, so so it's easy to be a good defensive coordinator when you're the defensive coordinator with Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, etc., Michael Brockers, that entire defense. We'll see what he does, but these young coaches have impressed, and I'm telling you, the shit my dog took this morning would be better at managing an NFL game than Anthony Lynn. There's no doubt in my mind about that. So they can't. There's no way he's any worse than Anthony Lynn was last year. It has to be an upgrade. It has to be. I tend to agree with you. So we'll see what Anthony yeah. Lynn does. Where he's uh, the offensive coordinator. Where right now? Uh, he went. Uh, God, why can't I Detroit? remember? Uh, Was he it Detroit? Might be Detroit. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if it's Detroit. They always hire dumb people in Detroit, so that wouldn't shock me either. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> double check though. Anthony Lynn look is. Let's see. He played with the. Yep, Detroit Lions. That's it. Detroit Lions. Detroit boy, Lions. Oh boy, congratulations, he to, Detroit. He gets to work with Jared Goff. We're uh, we're all about oh. that. All right, let's move on. We are moving to the Denver Broncos, who I feel like we all kind of liked what they did here. Oh, yeah. uh, they they went 5-11 and 11 last year. Not great. Obviously, they had to deal with a ton of injuries uh, throughout the season. They have a just absolutely fantastically potential skill set group. Uh, I mean, they're, they're skill players if they live up to the potential that they have. Um, you know, I think they could be one of the best teams in the league, which is why the Aaron Rodgers trade talk is so interesting because they would immediately be uh, a contender in this conference. So uh, their needs were linebacker, edge, quarterback, running back, and safety. And here's what they did. They, uh, they also took a lot of players, took a lot of shots, and I, of course, am a fan of that first-round cornerback Patrick Sertan, uh, the second out of Alabama. Uh, round two, running back Javante Williams out of North Carolina. Love that pick. 
Uh, interior offensive lineman Quinn Miners out of Wisconsin Whitewater in the third round. Baron Browning linebacker out of Ohio State in the third round. Fifth round, safety Caden Stearns out of Texas. And safety Jamar Johnson out of Indiana. Those were only 12 picks apart, but two safeties again. We'll see what happens. Round six, uh, wide receiver Seth Williams out of Auburn, who our buddy Casey that always jumps on here is a massive fan of. He said Seth Williams is the number one wide receiver in this draft. I don't think Whoa. so, but okay. Uh, <laughs> round round seven, Harry <laughs> wow. Vincent, cornerback out of LSU. Uh, and then they also got edge rusher Jonathan Cooper out of Ohio State, edge rusher Marquis Spencer out of Mississippi State. Uh, they took dudes, and they filled holes, and I love it. I love what they did here. Yeah. Completely agree, and they, they lost A.J. Boye to free agency. He went over to Carolina, and when Boye and Bryce Callahan were healthy – for Denver last year, you weren't throwing the ball on them. Bryce Callahan gave up some like 0.11 fantasy points per route ran against. That was good for fourth best among left corners when he was actually playing. Now, we did get hurt, and we saw that secondary fall apart. So the thing with Denver, we were all – when they came to nine, I was like, man, this could be Justin Fields. This is probably where Justin Fields is going to go, and I think it would have been a good move. Look, people are talking about a quarterback competition between Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. That's not a competition. <laughs> Drew Locke is absolutely terrible, and I know people hate it when I bag on their players and their quarterbacks, but Drew Locke, we had a saying on the NFL show, and it was Jesus Christ, Drew Locke, because what you had was you're taking it. You'd get team totals of 15 and a half, 16 and a half, this, these juicy money numbers, and Drew Locke with all that talent, KJ Hamler, an absolute speed burner out of Penn State, Tim Patrick, uh, they had Cortland Sutton. Of course, he got hurt. They have all of these weapons, and Drew Locke couldn't hit the you know broad side of a barn. And then, of course, you have Vic Fangio punting on fourth and two from the opposing team's 35-yard line because the dude is probably the most cowardly coach in the NFL, maybe right outside of Mike Vrabel in that playoff game. We all know what happened there, and that also pisses me off. But I love what they did here. Sertan, terrific corner. I actually thought he was a little bit better than J.C. Horn. I love what they did there. Javante Williams to replace Philip Lindsay and play alongside Melvin Gordon. Everyone had him as one of their top backs, if not the second best pure running back, you know, outside of Najee Harris in this draft out of North Carolina. Love the pick. Love the guard they took. And then I love late in drafts in the sixth and seventh round. They're getting guys from pedigreed schools. Yep. Auburn, LSU, Ohio State, Mississippi State. Bring in good players who know how to win and know how to compete at the highest level. Even though they didn't take the quarterback, which I can understand the frustration of Denver fans not doing that, I loved this draft. I think they knocked it out of the park. I had them and the Chargers neck and neck in this division. I wouldn't call you crazy for saying Denver was better or the Chargers, but I think top to bottom, Denver got a bunch of players who are going to make that roster and contribute right away and make them better. Love what Denver did. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And and I'm going to tell you that I 100% believe, call me a fool, come come the middle of June, that per Patrick Sertan pick was not the Broncos pick. Okay, That's not their selection. This is an NBA deal where he was drafted by one team, but he is going to be traded to the to, to the uh, to the uh, Green Bay Packers. But the Green Bay Packers want it. This guy, they called him. They said, we're going to give you three first round for Aaron Rodgers. The, they're going to make that move. Who do you want with mm. this pick? And and they said, pick Patrick. We're taking Patrick. They have no reason to get wow. fields because they believe love might be the guy. That's fine. I think that deal is done. Okay. That's my opinion. Um, but if you turn Patrick Sertan and two other guys into Aaron Rodgers, uh, it's this worth team it. might be the favorite to win the Super Bowl over their divisional uh, rivals, Chiefs. Um, wow. I, th yeah. I think this team is more talented than the Chiefs from top to bottom Ooh. if you put Rodgers on it. I think they're a quarterback away from being really good. Uh, Javante Williams, I'm 100% with you. I think he's an unbelievable running back in their system. And this is what you do with running backs. This is why you don't pay running backs. This is why you don't draft them in the first round. You just take a young guy in the second or the third round and you put him with your older veteran running back. And when your older veteran running back gets put out to pasture, you get the new guy, the rock, and then you just keep rotating it. Two years from now, you get another other guy in the second or third round uh they 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 attack some some offensive line issues they attack the defensive problems and then i'm with you i love taking crazy athletic dudes in your late round picks and just seeing hey maybe they become something i don't know but they played at big schools against good competition and 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 if they don't make the roster who gives a shit it was a sixth or a seventh round pick mm -hmm. it doesn't matter exactly but three or four of those guys 
could end up actually being real legit contributors to your football team. There aren't a lot of teams that are going to have six and seventh round picks that would be real contributors to their football team. Yes. Uh, the, the Seth Williams pick, the Kerry Vincent Jr. pick, uh, Jonathan Cooper, uh, all of those were guys that uh, before they ended up going in this year's draft were talked about as high round guys, second, third, yep. fourth round dudes, and and they all end up going, you know, late sixth, you know, seventh round guys. I think it was a, a, an awesome decision uh, to go out and, and take a flyer on a bunch of these dudes. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.